Hey guys, Khalil El Ghul here with Glasshouse Real Estate. I am in the middle of a couple Toll Brothers deals right now, so I thought I would document the entire process because I think a lot of you out there might find it helpful. So today's video is about the pre-construction meeting. Now, although these notes are from a toll deal, it really applies to all production builders. They all work a little bit differently, but the core of my message that follows is the same. The pre-construction meeting is hugely important and it's not for the reasons that you might think. The difference between passive home buyers and proactive home buyers, and for that matter, aggressive and passive agents really shines during this meeting. Now remember, throughout the entire journey of building a new construction home, we are going to have wants and needs and the builder on the other side is not going to be interested in accommodating all of our wants and needs and very often falls short of expectations. So in this meeting, we really want to set a tone. Look, earlier on in my career, I would attend these meetings, I would pay attention, I would listen to everything the builder had to say, ask a few questions, give the builder the benefit of the doubt with everything that they said, and then call the day, but not anymore. And frankly, that's usually the way it goes with most agents. And I could tell because I see the look on their face when we push back. I've learned a lot over these last almost 20 years. And this appointment is one where I really try to shine and I really try to earn my value as an agent. And I can't take all the credit. I've been lucky to work with some fantastic buyers who have taught me a lot. I have personally built new construction. I've been through the process, but the proactive buyers, the smart buyers, the ones who are detail oriented, the educated ones, those are the ones that I learned the most from. And I'm taking all that experience and giving it to you here today. So before we get into the actual purpose of the meeting or the official purpose of the meeting, I want to go over some of the not so obvious reasons why this meeting is hugely important. So this meeting is usually the first time you are going to meet the construction manager. And if you've seen any of my other videos, the construction manager plays the biggest role throughout the construction of your home. The difference between a good construction manager or a bad construction manager, or even the difference between a good relationship and a bad relationship can make all the difference in the world with regards to the final product. You'll also meet the project manager, which is basically the construction manager's boss. And these two people are usually the first two people you'll meet that actually know anything at all about constructing a home, besides me, of course. So the relationship with the construction manager and project manager is something that you should not take lightly, nor should your agent. At this appointment, it's really a delicate dance. We want to do two things here. First, we want to convey that we are an astute buyer, a diligent buyer, someone who pays attention to detail, someone who's going to hold the builder accountable, frankly, kind of be a thorn in their side. And we want to be involved throughout the entire process. No detail is too small. And last, we have high expectations. And a lot of times the buyers aren't comfortable playing that role and that's fine. Just make sure you have an agent who's capable of playing that role. You don't necessarily need to be loved. You definitely don't want to be hated, but you kind of want to be feared. Look, they're dealing with a lot of houses, with a lot of people. There will be a lot of decisions to be made and we'll get into all that later. But we want us in the back of their mind when making those decisions because the last thing they want is another headache. At the end of the day, we all had the same goal, to build a beautiful home, to build a sound home and to have a satisfied client. And that's also part of the messaging that we want to convey. I know it kind of sounds sort of obtuse, but I've been there. When you're coming down a stretch and you need a favor, having that good relationship really makes a difference. The second most important part of this appointment is the ability to make what I call sort of micro changes to the home that on a surface are small, but have a huge impact on the way the home lives. So this one is tricky and it varies on community. It varies on the builder and it varies on the kind of changes that you are looking for. And look, there their default is to say no automatically. But if you don't ask, if you don't push, you don't press, you'll never know. The number one objection that the builder will give you or the construction team will give you is they'll say, well, we already pulled permits, so we can't make any changes. We're not asking for structural changes. We're not asking for changes that require permits. We're asking for micro changes that they can in fact make. I'm going to be able to make. Hey, go, 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 go. A lot of times these construction teams can be intimidating. But I can't stress enough. You have to take your shot. Here is a list of things that we got changed in my last two pre-construction meetings. We moved windows. We relocated the outside air conditioner units. For some reason, they always want to put those next to the deck. They're so loud. We consolidated the HVAC and water heater into the same room and pushed them into a corner so that we would get a bigger basement. We added a wall to a laundry room. We made the primary bedroom two feet longer. We reoriented the bathtub 
tub in the primary bathroom so that it wasn't sitting in the middle of the room. We added extra insulation over the garage where the kids' bedrooms would be. We didn't want them to wake up when someone got home. We rearranged garage stairs. We moved hose bibs. We raised the gas line up to the deck level versus the bottom level. We had doors swing the opposite direction. We relocated trees in the yard. I could go on and on. All these micro changes don't require permits. Many times the initial response is no. And we ask for a lot more than we actually got, but they are going to make a huge impact in the way the home lives. Bear with me. There's actually something that's much more important that I'll go over here in a moment. Now, the real objective of the pre-construction meeting, according to the builder, is to sort of walk you through the entire process of building the home. You're going to go over all your options, structural, design center, electrical, audio, one by one, confirm that we're all on the same page. And this is really important because sometimes I see builders or buyers try to sort of zoom through this, right? Because the meetings can get a little tedious and boring. But I think it's hugely important to go over every option one last time. Say them out loud question them. How many people got this option? What else are you seeing in the community? Has anyone complained about this particular option or that? Sometimes it can be really difficult when building these homes on paper, especially over the span of a couple months. And it's really easy to make mistakes. This is your last chance to really scrutinize exactly what you're putting in the house. So don't take it lightly. So once you do that and you go through all your options, it's really easy to get super focused on the actual house itself. And by default, the builder will go over the plot with you, exactly where your house is on the lot, how it's oriented. Is it a left-hand house, a right-hand house? But I want to see the grading plan, not just of your home. I want to see the master grading plan that shows all of the homes that neighbor your house. I want to see exactly how those homes are going to be oriented as it relates to your house. I want to know exactly where the building restriction line is, because if there is an opportunity to shift the house six feet back or six feet forward or turn it two degrees, which is something I've done successfully several times, that can make a huge difference in privacy, in yard, in road noise, you name it. So don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't let them use we got permits as an excuse. Sometimes Sometimes it's valid, sure. Oftentimes it is not. You don't need to pull new permits if you shift the house two feet forward. And that's really the long and the short of it. Yes, there's a lot of technical issues, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about the big picture. It's about really taking a chance to scrutinize your house one last time, say the options out loud, see what other people in the community are doing, get feedback from folks who actually lived in the neighborhood with some of these options, get those micro changes made to have a huge impact and understand how everyone around you is also going to live. And most importantly, establish a positive working relationship with the construction team. Get their phone number, give them your phone number, set an expectation for communication. Are you gonna call them every week? every two weeks, every month, let them know ahead of time and reiterate your desire to be an active participant in the construction process. The difference between a diligent buyer and a passive buyer will have a huge impact on the building process. And that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. I'll release many more videos throughout all these appointments. If you have any questions or I can help you with any of your appointments, all my contact information is below. Feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. Thanks.